Okay, we're back, we're live, we're here, we're Think Tech. We're talking about, uh, let's see, we're talking about a number of things. Um, first, we're building Hawaii's tomorrow. Second, we're, we're talking about Aloha United We Stand. That's the name of the show. And Aloha United Way has uh, given us this, this opportunity. Uh, Robert Pennybacker of PBS, he's the executive producer of learning initiatives at PBS, is here with us. Hi, Robert. Hi. Thanks for coming down. Thanks. Great to, to have you here. Thanks, PBS. Wow, PBS. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're calling this Yes for Hickey No, mm -hmm. Can Do. Uh, and Hickey No is the subject of our discussion today. Mm -hmm. But before we get to that, I want to talk about PBS. You know, my wife is like married to you. Oh. You see her in the neighborhood. We're neighbors. Yeah? Uh -huh. <laughs> see her in the neighbor neighborhood, too. I mean, it's an important part of life. Now, I know there are people these days that say, I don't want to watch te television, any kind of television. Mm -hmm. But as you go down the continuum, you know, from... from uh, I'm going to call it, you know, crime and accidents, and yeah. that kind of thing. Reality and shows. And you move toward, you know, the higher end of things, you get PBS. And she lives on PBS. I mean, she oh. can give you your whole broadcasting <laughs> schedule, hour for hour. I'm, I'm glad to hear it. A lot so of people like that. She's well informed then. Yeah. <laughs> she is. Yeah. She is. And she's, you know, she's well involved in the arts, you know, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of arts there. It's really yeah. an ideal station. And oh, it's, thank you. Uh, great, you know, it's like, it's the... It's the uh, NPR. Can I say this? The NPR of video. The yeah, NPR exactly. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. It's nutritious. That's what it is. It's good for you. Yeah, yeah, I think it goes all the way back to um, LBJ passed the law about public television um, a little over 50 years ago that the, you know there should be television that enriches your life and educates you and is not for commercial gain. And you know, 50 years since then, we've stuck to it. It's yeah. really important. Yeah. It's important as a quality of life matter. You know, yeah. when you think of, um, you know, how much we get out of the box. I mean, most people. Anyway. Yeah. Some people deny, but most people. Uh, and when you think that, you know, that's where intellectually our community lives, uh, mm -hmm. in in terms of news and features and art and public discussions. I mean, you know, it's really important that we have this in yeah. the community. I think. Yeah. Well, thank you. We don't get a huge audience, but we're not in the game for for the ratings because we don't need to sell our ratings. We're yeah. in it for, for quality and for, um, you know, television that engages people. Yeah. yeah. A, a big news about PBS, before we get off PBS, uh, is that you're, you're building a new studio. That's uh, right. Down on Sand Island Road somewhere. Right. PBS Hawaii. We're going to be moving from, we're at UH Manoa now, but it's not our building. The university owns it and, and they need it. So we're, uh, we've been fundraising. Uh, moving a television station is, is an expensive item. It's a, it's a $30 million project, and that's pretty, pretty much an average cost for moving and building any kind of television station that reaches the entire state. And we're about $6 million from, from the $30 million. So we're clo close enough to start construction, and we're going to be on Sand Island Access Road uh, off of Nimitz, uh, actually the site of the old K5 News. Is that on the right side or the left side? As you, uh, as you make the turn. Well, if, if you're heading to the airport, it's on the left side. Okay. Yeah. If you're heading down Sand Island Road? It's on the left. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's really important. It I is. Yeah. Guys we'll have our own home, and we'll own it. It'll be permanent, um, and it'll be a place where um, people can come to be on our shows, to be in the audience. Um, there'll be plenty of parking. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's interesting. Not only um, are we moving away from the university, but... Uh, will be the only freestanding television station in the state. The trend has been for TV stations to be in office building or condominiums because, because uh, you know, it's just expensive to have your own building. But we just felt, as Hawaii's public television station, we need our own place where people can come and, and gather. So we'll, we'll be the only one. It's true. It's a gathering place. Yeah. I, mean, I went yeah. down for one of your talk shows. What is it called? Island uh, Insights. Insights. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the... The, the guests had an opportunity to spend a little time with mm -hmm. the host that day. It was Daryl Huff was the host. Very and this was uh, about the economy and, mm -hmm. and the university and research and whatnot. And um, it was, it was, a, it was a, a salon, you know, in the, yeah. French, in the, in the yeah. French sense of the word. Exactly. Sitting yeah. around there, we yeah. were talking about everything. Said, wow, yeah. this is, you know, this is an experience all by itself even before the show. Yeah, <laughs> it's, like, it's like getting around, going around the dinner table. Yeah. Just without the food, but that's the whole point of it's. It's um, our studio is it's a safe place. I mean, we've had people that are just on the very opposite ends of really um, volatile issues, but come into our studio and with the right host, you can sit there with um, 
you know, the person who you consider maybe your enemy uh, in, a, in this other realm and, and try to talk things out. And um, that really doesn't happen in many other places. Yeah, and, and, and in fact, you know, you might even have resolution of an issue. You might mm -hmm. have, you know, come together somehow. Yeah, or at least know where your, the common ground is. You know, yeah. everyone has yeah. common ground. And so um, uh, it's, it's really magical when that can happen. Yeah. And um, we're not, we're not gotch, you know, we don't want to gotch right. anybody. We're just there to, to um, talk. It's yeah. community. Yeah. It's a complete expression of community, yeah. which is so great about it. Yeah. And part of this is uh, what we want to talk about today, Hikino, mm -hmm. uh, which stands for what? Can do in Hawaiian? Hikino is can do in Hawaiian, yes. So it, it appeared a few years ago mm -hmm. that Hawaii had an interest in a talent at the teen mm -hmm. level, if I can use that term, yep. uh, in video. And indeed, the, the, you know, the, uh, the technology had arrived at a place where it didn't cost a million billion. Mm -hmm. uh, look at this, right, yes, here exactly. in our studio. Yep. And you can do video. You can do first class, mm -hmm. even in this case, award-winning video. Yep. Uh, and you guys, you decided that you would partner up with that. Tell me about that decision. Well, uh, it was a, a lot of factors that kind of came together at the right time. One factor I have to bring up is that the, the then new CEO of PBS Hawaii, was Leslie Wilcox, who was one of the leading television journalists in Hawaii for, gosh, a long, 25-year-long career. Um, she was uh, asked by the board, you know, do you want to be our CEO? She was still in a very, you know, upswing, very thriving career as a, as a broadcaster, uh, a newscaster. And she said, you know, I, I think I would like that. So she became the CEO. Um, there seemed to be a need for the local station, PBS Hawaii, to do something different in the area of education. And she, being a journalist, thought um, maybe it should be in the area of journalism and news because it's really important to give our youth uh, a voice in that arena that it's not really happening on a statewide basis. Um, that, that happening, plus uh, the rise of a, a really strong media program at Waianae High School called Sea Rider Productions, all coming around together at the same time, uh, made us think that um, yeah, this could be possible, that, that um, high schools, we, we didn't think of middle schools at, at that time, and we surprised ourselves, but we thought at that time, you know, high schools uh, with the right coaching could really, um, could really pull this off and meet, um, meet the PBS standards, uh, PBS broadcast standards in a, a weekly news show. So that was just an idea. We had to get grants because launching something like this was, was pretty expensive. Uh, and there happened to be a grant proposal to our um, funding, the funding arm of PBS stations, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. They were looking for something new like this. So we, we sent them a grant. They liked the idea. And um, it kind of rolled out from there. And what year was this? Just while, while. Uh, it was. We went on the air in 2000, February of 2011, so the beginning of 2011. Mm -hmm. the, it was about a year-long buildup, as you can imagine. So we've been working at this for, for about five years, and it's it's really um, grown beyond our, our wildest expectations. Yeah. We, have, we have 90 schools across the state participating now, high school and middle school, and um, one, believe it or not, one elementary school who does very good work. Well, why and, not? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's all about the teacher. They have a great teacher. Yeah. yeah. And, and you've been growing with it. I mean, you've been getting more and more involved over these five years. Yes. Well, um, at the time, I, I had the position called uh, VP of Creative Services, which is the department that runs our, our local productions and local programming. Um, and it, it fell into my lap because Hikino is a local program, a local show. Uh, so I assumed that, that duty. But it soon became evident that it's, it's a whole other ball of wax because it's, it's really an education initiative. And started to take more and more of my time. Uh, I mean, you know, just communicating with 90 schools, uh, it's a full-time job. Yeah. So uh, uh, my boss, Leslie Wilcox, was very understanding. And we, we agreed, you know, that's a full-time job. And your previous job is a full-time job. So uh, we better pick one of them. So we picked Hikino for me. Picture passion. Yes. Well, my new passion, because I had not been involved in education before. I'm, yeah. I'm a television person, been in Hawaii TV for 30 years, Is that right? and this was brand new to me. But um, it was just um, really inspiring, really thrilling to work with kids. Uh, it um, 
made me realize that I, I, I think there's hope with this new generation coming up. They're, talk to you about that. They're very, they're very, um, they're not just bright. They're extremely bright. That's the first thing you notice. But they're really compassionate. They, they, they care about the right things. And um, uh, you know, I don't mean to sound, uh, you know, no, small, okay. smaltzy, but we have it, this smaltzy conversation all the yeah, time. Yeah, it's, it's okay. You know, I mean, just compared to, um, you know, uh, my generation, you know, the baby movers that you know were sort of the me, me, me generation. This generation really seems about helping others and um, maybe saving the world, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's really um, very inspiring. Yeah, we went, we went last uh, week to do, um, as we do every year, mm -hmm. a little walk around at the science fair, state oh. science fair. And mm -hmm. you see the same, you feel the same thing, and mm -hmm. you react in a schmalsy way. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, then they come down here after the fact. We talked to some of the winners. and. Schmaltz is all over the place. Mm -hmm. I, I know exactly. I know about that generation. Mm -hmm. yep. Talk to them all the time. You yeah. can hardly resist them. They, uh, what did, what did the, the, um, the, uh, the chair, one of the chairs of mm -hmm. the uh, Hawaii Academy of Science who has worked on this, Neil Adabari, he's a doctor, mm -hmm. he said something like, uh, you know, they, they change our lives. Yep. And it's true. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so tell me about the, uh, you know, the actual, um, you know, uh, activities mm -hmm. of Hickey No. What, what does it do under your supervision? Okay. Well, um, we have a weekly show. We have a weekly half-hour show that is comprised of uh, usually about seven separate news stories from seven separate schools and a host school. Uh, we work in uh, rounds of six new shows at a time, uh, week to week. So uh, in a given round, it's, it, it, it's a lot. It's a yeah. lot going on. Yeah. So we have a we have a you know a fall, winter, and spring round. So uh, through these rounds of new shows, um, uh, you know, gosh, fifty schools are working on stories, uh, and we give them time to to develop the stories. Uh, it's a little different than um, than a daily news show. Uh, we want them to learn along as they go. So uh, if they got if they uh, come up with their ideas early enough. They actually have about two months to go from idea to the completion of the story. How big is the team? You know, it varies. That's what's interesting is there's no there's no standard out there in, in the school system, and that's one of the things we're trying to work on. So there may be a, a team from a school that is only three or even two students, and then there'll be a, a class that has 30 students, and, and that's a little overwhelming. Um, <laughs> and so you have deal, to level the field some way. We, we, deal with, we deal with them all. Um, how they learn is over the course of this two months, um, they'll do they'll submit scripts. We uh, review them and critique them. They go back and they they revise them. They'll send their first rough cut. Uh, this is all over the internet because again they're doing it from their school wherever they may be, and we're at, at PBS Hawaii. And uh, myself and a team of uh, professional mentors, people from the profession, are critiquing the rough cuts. Um, you know, uh, you know very. Uh, very candidly and very, and very much in detail, telling them where they, where we think they can improve. Uh, they'll do a re-edit and send the new version. But this, on the average, goes back and forth at least six times because uh, as they're improving the story, developments happen and the story may change. When they get to the point where uh, we say, "Okay, you've you've met our PBS standard," and not just a local PBS standard, but a national PBS standard. For uh, production value and um, uh, journalistic integrity, balance and fairness, then we say, "Okay, uh, your story is going to air." And uh, we thought we would like to have had that happen a few days before the air date, but it, it never Sometimes came out that it's way. Sometimes just before the, the air date. <laughs> well, it's it's usually the 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 day bef the night before the morning of, and our editor um, he's not an editor in the sense of he's not creating stories, but our editor compiles these separate stories and all the elements into the half hour show yeah. and, and we put it on the air. And so they've worked really hard. Uh, it's very stressful. But in the end, they have this uh, uh, immediate gratification of their work uh, has met a certain level and it's broadcast to the entire state. Yeah. Over so that's and over, not yeah. just once. Yes, and then we do reruns and then every show and now every separate story is on our website. So. Um, you know, it's. I didn't have anything like this when I was in high school. I, I wanted to be in film and television. Uh, these students can can walk away with a um, 
professional piece of work for their for their portfolio, if that's what they want to get into. Even but, before they've graduated high school. Yeah. Uh, now we're not trying to cha train the next generation of journalists and filmmakers. Some of them do go on to that. Uh, what's really more important is what they learn in this process, and and. Uh, what they learn is they, what they call project-based learning. We're going to talk about what they learn, okay. because I want to learn that, too, from okay. you. <laughs> okay. That's Robert Pennybacker. He's the executive producer of Learning Initiatives at PBS. PBS, right? PBS. Mm -hmm. Right here. We're honored to have you. Okay, we're going to call this, we are calling this Yes for Hiki No, mm -hmm. Can Do, here on Building Hawaii's Tomorrow, the Aloha United We Stand. Mm -hmm. We're also going to connect you up with Aloha United okay. Way. Okay, very good. We'll be right back. Okay. Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute and host on Ehana Kako, a weekly program on the Think Tech Hawaii broadcast network. Ehana Kako means let's work together. Think of the sad alternative, let's not work together. Here in Hawaii, with all of our diversity and the richness of the people, it's important for us to come together around issues on the, the basis of what's right, and what's good, and what's going to serve the common good. And that's what we try to do at Ehana Kako. Every week we interview movers and shakers, people in government, business, and other sectors of society to talk about how to create together a better government, economy, a better world here in Hawaii that can bless the rest of the world. I thank you for your attention to Think Tech Hawaii, and we look forward to seeing you every Monday, 2 to 3 p.m., on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. We're Ehana Kako, and we wish you well. Aloha. Okay, we're back. We're live. We're here with Robert Pennybacker. He's the executive director of uh, learning initiatives at PBS. Uh, and we're talking about yes for hickey no here. Can do. So, okay, the standards. You know, I'm, I'm, it's, it's sort of legendary. The PBS standards. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a sampling of what that is? Uh, I'll, I'll give you a really good sampling. Uh, we're really proud of a, a story that a young uh, student did from Milo Lee probably one of the most remote areas Fishing uh, village. Yes, in, in Hawaii. Uh, his name is Hoku Subiono, and he and his crew, they did a story about a very controversial topic, the 30-meter telescope. Uh, but he did the story from the point of view of uh, he being a native Hawaiian who uh, you know, wants to know about his culture, but is also interested in science. So he, he set up the story by saying, um, I'm a native Hawaiian, I respect my culture, and they, they seem to be having a problem with this telescope. But I'm really into science, and I believe in, in, uh, you know, in studying the heavens. So I wanted to explore, I want to explore more about what this is about. So he went and he interviewed all the people from all the different factions of this controversy, from uh, the native Hawaiian group, to the environmentalists, to the scientists, um, to get the whole picture. And in the end of the report, uh, I was really proud of him, he said, he didn't pick a side. He said, "You know, uh, I discovered that this is a more complicated subject than I than I than I thought it was, and I'm going to give it some time." So, that is a perfect example of of uh, the PBS way, yeah, showing all sides, and uh, and making a contribution for this kid. Yeah, he yeah. learned something really important yeah. in the process. Yeah. So I was really proud of him. So that sample just popped in my yeah, head because yeah. it was fairly recent. Yeah. And, uh, good. Yeah, that's yeah. great because you know Hawaii does have mm, uh, what do you want to say unbalanced stories out there. Sure. <laughs> and yeah. it's so easy to you know to confuse the public. You can do it so easily. It's and it's it's too easy to pick a side. Yeah. Um, one uh, litmus test for us is if we get a story, and if we uh, can sense what side the reporter is on, then it can't air. Even if you just get a sense, even if the reporter doesn't say, I believe this, but you just in the tone of their voice or in the weight they give certain interviews, uh, you know, we, that's the test. And we go, mm, you know, we have to go back and take that element out. So you should, this is, this is sort of old school, but PBS holds to it. You should not really know what side the reporter is on. They're there to explore all sides of an issue and, and let you, you know, take in the information. So what about the choice of subject? I mean, do you make the choice? Do you uh, consult and advise with them about the choice? Who, who decides? Uh, all the, the topics are chosen by the students. And so the first part of the process is they get together, and, and this is the part we don't see because it's in their classroom, and they brainstorm with the teacher. What, what are some topics 
the, that we're interested in, what are some stories that we want to tell. Uh, so uh, when you watch Hikino, you're truly seeing story ideas that the students want, wanted to explore. Uh, what we do then is we ask them to tell us how they're going to tell the story, who they're going to interview, what resources are they going to uh, get, how are they going to research it, uh, and then we give them the green light. So we, we've never rejected a story based on the topic. Uh, we've only, I don't want to say rejected, but we've, we've um, sent them back to the drawing board if we didn't feel that they have thought through you know, all the points that they have to touch in producing this story. Yeah. So, um, so you're, re you're really seeing, uh, you're really getting a glimpse into uh, the mind of Hawaii students when you yeah, watch the yeah, show. Yeah. Yeah. You never have to reject. You, you can shape it. You can right. you can say back up a little bit. Yeah. And how are you treating this and try to treat it more more uh, fairly and yeah. so forth. Yeah, I've had uh, just a couple of instances where when the topic came came across, I said, "Whoa, you know, uh, this this is a hot one," and I I paused <laughs> or maybe you know held my breath, but then I'd say, uh, then I kind of assessed, um, does I do I think this school is ready? Because that would be the other thing. So we we may make suggestions like, you know. Um, uh, Maybe next semester, you need a little more work. How about doing something simpler? Um, but uh, there have been cases where some pretty controversial subjects have come our way. And I felt, you know, I, I think this school is ready, but we're going to really work with them on it. And so it's a, some schools are more ready than other schools. Yep. Some students, some teachers for that matter, mm -hmm. more ready. But, but you, can, you can teach them all. At the end of the day, they're all going to be a cut above where they started. Right. Right. We're very inclusive. We don't reject a school um, based on their equipment um, or um, the, you know, the maturity of their program. We, we ask them to tell us you know, very clearly where they're at now so that we know. And then we have, we have workshops, we have online tutorials. So we really work with them to get them to a point where they can produce. And uh, some of the beginning schools, uh, we, have, we ha suggest really simple things, but they're actually they're good television. Um, they can do um, short how-to pieces, you know, how, you know, how to pound poi and things like that. Not and, the full and 30 minutes. No, yeah. just, just, um, just short and pieces. You, and you can play the shorts uh, in your calendar. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, the, other, the other part uh, is, is the equipment and the production values. And mm -hmm. I take it from what you're saying is that the, the, the student is in a class. The class is mm -hmm. a regular class at the school. Uh, a credit class, even? Well, again, I, I'm, there's no standard there. So it, we ha we're in 90 schools, and uh, they're all sort of different. Some of them have a really traditional um, core media class. For others, it may be an after-school club, but with a teacher advisor. Uh, for others, it's an elective. It, it really runs the gamut. And that's been one of the, one of the challenges, is that we, that we don't have a standard that we're dealing with out in the, uh, in the DOE. But it's growing all the time. Yeah. Yep. More schools interested, more teachers, and more students. I'm sure you know when they see the work, when they look at PBS and see what the other yep. students are doing, they probably get all caught up in Ab it. Absolutely. And the equipment, the equipment, the, the DOE or the school buys the equipment. Again, um, it's it's sort of, you know, it's it's different for every school. Uh, I don't believe that there's a standard issue set of equipment from the DOE. I hope we could get to that point. Yep. So from what we've observed, um, uh, teachers and programs. Uh, apply for grants and fundraise. But as you said, um, you know, luckily the technology is, is very, uh, it's democratized now. And you can get, uh, uh, you know, I don't like them using iPhones, but I guess that, that would be the extreme <laughs> example. There have been some iPhone video in, in our stories. Um, I don't like it because there's not a real lens, and I would like them to learn how to use a lens. But you can get a, uh, a high-definition camera now for, um, I'm going to say maybe, $300 at the low end, and uh, it may not be the ideal camera, but it'll it'll work for Hikino. And it'll be okay on television. Yeah, yeah. actually, it's that's the stunning thing. I don't think the students in the schools and the teachers see the full range of high definition until it broadcasts on a, on a high def station yeah, like PBS yeah, Hawaii. Yeah. And and I'm even shocked where I go, oh my goodness, that little camera, you know, has turned out that picture. So um, so the technology is such now that it's relatively affordable and um, and so we work with what they have yeah. I got to tell you something I learned only yesterday you know you can take video obviously on an iPhone mm -hmm. or an Android now there's a thing called it's an app called Periscope 
Mm. And Periscope will let you stream directly off right. your phone. Right, right. And you can stream to the world. I mean, so we have all this stuff in here. We yeah. stream all this. Uh, you just, all you need is an iPhone yeah. and this free app. <laughs> Everybody's a broadcaster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad, but I guess it's good because it gets the word out. Yeah. On the other hand, you have to be discerning about what you watch. You right. Know? Right. So somebody is watching uh, back in PBS headquarters, and they give awards, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us about the awards that you, you've won at Hikino? Well, um, most recently, Hikino Schools from Hawaii uh, won a considerable amount of the awards at a uh, national competition called the Student Television Network Competition. This year it was in San Diego, and uh, they collectively walked away with 28 awards. And a lot it, it was it was community. stunning. Yeah. And what was really neat to see is that um, only Hawaii was the only state where uh, all the schools sat together and and uh, you know were a force among themselves. If a school from California won something, that school would cheer and, and congratulate themselves, but no other California schools would would you know cheer as well. <laughs> so it's sort of typical of Hawaii. We're very close really and we had so we had a Hawaii. Block. But um, this was my first time at that uh, conference. It's in its 12th year, and uh, uh, not only was I really uh, impressed by how our Hawaii students did, but, uh, but nationally, you get to see that this uh, media education is it's huge. Uh, it's, not, it's, it's not an elective, any, it's not a hobby, it's not a, oh, oh that's, that's nice, go ahead and play with your camera. It's, it's a serious educational pursuit now. And, um, and, uh, What's the name of the organization uh, they, uh, the, they, and the conference? Yeah, so the letters are STN, but it's Student Television Network. Okay. And that's their their annual conference. And I can go look it up mm -hmm. on the web and I yeah. can see some of the Hickey No movies there. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Um, well, I wanted to also connect you up with, um, you know, the, I guess the origins of this show, mm -hmm. which is, um, you know, Aloha United, we stand. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, I, I take it from that that you get some support from them. Yes, there are supporters. We want to talk about yeah. how that works. Yeah, we're we're really happy. So we PBS Hawaii is on the list of uh, you know Aloha United Way uh, uh, nonprofits that you can uh, donate to as an employee of a certain company that you know that is subscribing to to Aloha United Way. So mm -hmm. we're uh, we're very very grateful that that they support us in that way. It's really important. Uh, we get grants, you know, to do programs like Kikino, but um, to operate the station, you know, uh, I was surprised when I started working there. It really is that that slogan, viewers like you. Uh, we get a little bit from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and they really make us work for it. But <laughs> the rest of it are from local local foundations and local people that believe in us and want to see us continue doing what we're doing. And, and sending us those checks. So uh, Aloha United Way is just a great way to, to, to funnel those individuals uh, to us. Uh, but, um, it, you know, it's really important. We, we really, uh, this operation lives and dies by the public. Yeah, really, well, really in, in terms and of grants, should. you're in exactly the right place. You're, yeah. you're um, you know, teaching them something valuable. It's mm -hmm. a learning experience, mm -hmm. you, you know, because you're the executive producer of learning initiatives. Oh, yeah, they learn. Uh, and, and grant writing, these days, so much of it is for the benefit of the kids and for education. Yeah, yeah. It's been gratifying that we've, we've found that, uh, you know, uh, grants are not easy. But we've found that the organizations that give grants, um, really, really, their ears perk up when we describe what is happening in Hikino. Because um, it's about education, it's about, it's about developing the next generation, and we've proven that it works. So, um, yeah. So we've been lucky in that we've we've been really able to support this because it's um, as you can imagine it's it's a it's a big undertaking. Yeah. And I wanted to uh, I want I want to take a moment and discuss the, you know the whole generation which we talked about mm -hmm. briefly. Uh, let's take a short break. We'll come back and see if we can connect this with the generation in Hawaii, uh, what you have learned mm -hmm. uh, from your work with them, and I suppose what they have learned from their work with you. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's Robert Pennybacker. He's the executive producer of Learning Initiatives at PBS. Uh, we're delighted to have him here. Uh, I don't. I, I consider you sort of the mecca. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, rather, you know, rather than another station, you're more than that. 
Um, and we're talking about Aloha United, we stand. We're talking about yes for hickey, no, can do. We'll be right back. Inspired by an ancient culture, classical Chinese dance, vigorous physicality, timeless stories, 5,000 years of Chinese music and dance, Shen Yun presents authentic Chinese culture. Coming to Blaisdell Concert Hall, May 8th and 9th. Tickets at ShenYun.com or call 808-792-3919. Aloha, I'm Hunter Hevelin, host of Sustainable Hawaii here at Think Tech Hawaii. You can tune in every week on Thursday at 2 p.m. to see interviews with sustainability professionals from around the state and even further abroad, learning about activities with water management, food security, waste management, and a whole host of other uh, fascinating opportunities to get engaged with making a greener island. So if you're interested in making the transition from consuming individuals to communities of producers, check us out every Okay, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel with Robert Pennybacker. He's the executive producer of Learning Initiatives at PBS. We're talking about yes for hickey, no, can do. So we have a photograph. It's uh, definitely worth uh, showing this photograph mm -hmm. and describing what it is, uh, showing all the kids who were involved in these awards. Here it is. What a great photograph. Yeah, this is in, uh, in San Diego. This is a group photo of all the Hawaii kids. Uh, boy, it's a, it's a wide-angle lens, so we, we needed one to fit them all in. And this was uh, minutes after the awards ceremony, and you see some of them <laughs> holding up their awards. So they're, they're really on a high because they as I had mentioned earlier, uh, walked away with 28 uh, awards. And, um, you know, you notice that they're all wearing the same shirt. This was really interesting. They're from about 15 different schools, but uh, they feel like they're from one school or, or, you know, one state when they come to this competition. Yeah. So, so it was a, a real um, coming together of all That's the Hawaii right. schools. It's so yeah. important. You know, yeah. I mean, I've written about something well, I, I call uh, insular drift where the islands, you know, sort of distance themselves. Mm -hmm. They don't want to do anything together. They don't want to pipe, oh. uh, uh, you know, uh, an, an undersea cable. Mm -hmm. uh, some islands don't want tourist boats oh, right, there. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, they don't want ferry boats there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they want to do energy by themselves mm -hmm. uh, and so forth. Um, so that anything runs the other way, you know, like bringing people together, yeah. making group effort among many islands, this is really the best thing. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Hikino is giving us an opportunity yeah. to do that. But, but uh, to go to the point about the kids, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I think we worry about the, the brain drain. You know, mm -hmm. we worry about kids who are disaffected, who are not interested in mm -hmm. the community at all, mm -hmm. who are not going to do well in this life. Mm -hmm. um, and somehow he, you know, brings them together, or at least reflects a generation mm -hmm. that may be different than what you expected. Can you talk about that, Robert? I, I think so. You know, when we launched Hikino, you know, I didn't know what to expect. And all I, did, all I could do was relate back to my high school years and, and, and thought, oh boy, <laughs> this, this is going to be hard. But what I learned is uh, it's really gratifying. Um, they have, uh, have a built-in sense of morality. It's, it's really interesting. And how I found that out was, um, you know, we've done hundreds of stories now. They've done hundreds of stories. And uh, again, we send some back if they haven't met our standard. We have not sent one story back based on ethics. And I found that really remarkable. I mean, where they exaggerate, tell yeah, it wrong. Yeah, where, where they did something ethically, uh, you know, um, questionable mm -hmm. or doing something for their own gain or, you know, the whole, the whole spectrum of, of ethics. Yeah, that's great. And, uh, and that, you know, is a, is a big part of the, the PBS guidelines. And so that was an area that I was kind of worried about because I said, well, you know, these are kids and, you know, they don't know any better. Well, instinctively they do. And I, I just found that really remarkable. And, and it, it gives me hope, you know, that um, they, they're, they're coming into their adulthood already with a sense of, of fairness and what's right and wrong, and I, I think our job is to is to try our best not to mess them up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to, true. To keep them in that state of of, uh, of you know a moral compass. You know, the other thing is that when they do a story, and I'm sort of putting my own stick in their heads for a minute, trying mm -hmm. to see it through their eyes. Mm -hmm. When they do a story, they are thinking about that subject, learning about that subject, mm -hmm. feeling what the public knows or should know about that subject. Mm -hmm. 
and they become better citizens because they are more sensitized to community issues. Oh, yes. If they weren't doing the story, it wouldn't happen. Right. They'd be looking at their shoelaces, you know, about mm -hmm. some personal thing. This way they think on community level. That's they, absolutely right. When yeah. they finish, they're, they're better citizens. Yeah. You know, and, and what's great about kids is they, um, they're not afraid, so they'll, they'll call the governor for an interview. Really? They'll call, them, they'll call the That's mayors. fabulous. And, and if, if their story leads to that person, and, you know, um, it's really difficult for politicians to lie to children. So, you get, <laughs> so we get very interesting, uh, very uh, different sorts of interviews uh, with, um, with our leaders. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that they're really good at, and this is no surprise, um, they get the best interviews from their peers. We see stories about um, you know, very heavy issues about what kids are going through now, and uh, kids are interviewed, and uh, they'll give interviews that they absolutely would not give an adult because there's that trust sitting there speaking with their peer, with someone who is on their level and can understand it. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, you, you really, we really see things in their stories that you don't get anywhere else. It seems like this generation has a certain cohesive quality. We talk about millennials. I talk about the Kakaako kids myself, you know, downtown mm. here. Oh, the, art, the artists? Yeah, the artists, you but know. all those kids in the co-working spaces, and right. entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. and a lot of social activity, but at the edge of that social activity, there's always some serious purpose involved. Mm -hmm. And what I've, I've seen is they help each other mm -hmm. uh, for no reason, you know, voluntarily helping mm -hmm. each other. And, this, as your experience, uh, our experience is the same. We, we find this generation of kids very promising, more promising than we expected. I, I think know. so. You know, I think they're, they're, um, they're very wise for their years, and they know, they know the state the world is in, which is not great, but uh, they're not, uh, uh, they're not uh, afraid, and I think they see it as their, you know, their mission to, um, to solve things. Yeah. And they're very logical about, you know, how to solve things. They don't, they don't um, get hung up with, um, you know, with the stuff that we get hung up with. They yeah. just, what's the problem here? Uh, how can we help? How can, how can we make things better? How did that happen? It's more than school. Yeah. It's, it's a generation that, ha that has found some, some mm, togetherness, some gathering togetherness, yeah. And, yeah. and it actually helps itself in some yeah. ways. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. You know, I, uh, we had some conversations with some of these kids in the science fair, the winners of the science mm -hmm. fair. And it was, it was really, um, it was touching. So I would say to each one of them, uh, so what are you going to do now? Because you know, mm -hmm. most of them are seniors. What are you going to do now? Well, I'm going to go off and go to MIT and Stanford and whatever, whatever you like. I've mm -hmm. got all these scholarships. When you're done, what are you going to do? And each one of them, in their own way, and immediately, with, with not a nanosecond of delay, came back. So I'm coming home. No, oh, good. I'm going to be here. Good. I'm, I'm going to make this work. I'm going to be back to Hawaii. Mm. Whatever skills I have, I'm going to force the issue. Mm. I'm going to be here. That's and great I to think hear. that's also in this generation, don't yeah. you? Yeah. They care about their community. You know, they, yeah. they really do. And they're, they're, they're competitive. Don't get me wrong. They're as competitive as any generation was. But the end, the end goal is that they want to help, help the community, help others. Yeah. Not just, not just themselves. Yeah. You know, um, this is good. I, I mean, yeah, I've seen it, the same things you are, and I'm really happy to be able to make that comparison. Yeah, yeah. So, where is it going to go? Where is Hickey No going? Where is it going to go? Where do you see it expanding to? I mean, what What role does it play in PBS in general? How important is is it in your, you know, your array of programming? Uh, it's It's very important because it's uh, one of the shows, uh, and again, on the air, it's a television show. But it's one of the shows that engages an important part of the community. And that, that really is uh, how we differentiate ourselves. Our other local shows do as well, Insights you mentioned, our Hawaiian music shows, our cultural shows. But this is the one show that really plugs into that generation and, and to education in Hawaii. So it's, it's, we're going to keep it forever. I mean, it's really important. It's, you know, it's an important part of what we're all about. And, um, uh, what we're trying to do now, uh, what, we, what we think the next step is, is to get some sort of standard in the schools so that they, they can have maybe standardized equipment and a standardized class so that um, uh, we can more easily deal with the number of schools that, that want to do this. Because I said right now it's, it's all over the place in terms of yeah. the, uh, how advanced the program is, the equipment, the number of students involved, and, and what credit they're getting for it. And so uh, one of the most recent grants we got actually 
uh, is to write an actual Hikino curriculum in, in the language that the, the educators understand and present it and, and say, hey, does this make sense as an actual class? Yeah, so and, now you have a uniformity. Yeah, and once that happens, then um, I think a, a lot, we'll be doing a lot less of the heavy lifting because right now, um, I mean, the schools are great, but we're having to deal with, you know, people, schools from all different levels. And, and hopefully when that happens, it'll be a standardized um, class and activity, uh, and we'll know what we're dealing with. It will. I, yes. I mean, I, yeah. you know, looking at those important. kids in the, in, the, in the photograph, they're talking yeah. to each other, right? Yeah. So you have that commonality. Yeah, and it, it goes beyond just our needs, PBS Hawaii's needs. Um, you know, uh, digital media and telling stories and, and communicating information with this technology is, it's got to be a core subject. It, it, it's, it's the language of not only the future, but the present. And if we're not, uh, if we don't have a curriculum that addresses this, we're really doing them a disservice because they're going to graduate without the skills that they're going to need yeah, in, yeah. Uh, in the workplace. And, yeah. it, and it doesn't matter, they don't have to be journalists, they don't have to be filmmakers. They go into business, they go into education. They're going to need to know how to make videos to communicate their ideas. It's just, it's just the way it is. But some of them, and you probably know from watching the way those mm -hmm. social groups work, mm -hmm. are going to be leaders in this area. Yeah. Uh, I always said that the, the Descendants, that movie, The Descendants, mm -hmm. you know, was an example of one out of a thousand stories about Hawaii oh, that, yeah. that the world has not seen. Yeah. And um, we, we won't have any trouble finding the other 999 of them. Right. And these kids are going to find them and they're going to reveal them to the world. They're going to have the skills to do that. Right. And this will be Hawaii, the state of movies and video generated right here because yep. you know all the union troubles and all the you know the troubles we have when hollywood comes over here and and you know with the trucks and, mm -hmm. yeah. and all those gaffers and whatnot yeah. you know with the new technology you don't really need that no you don't you can, <laughs> these kids can be the successors to all of that and they yeah. can make a 5-0 that would make your head spin oh I know yeah they can, yeah you know? <laughs> yeah and in my old age i look forward to watching all that so uh yeah it's yeah. it's a very bright future in, in that regard yeah, yeah. And, and one of them is going to come around and take your job oh Robert. that's fine I'll be ready I'll be ready to get it <laughs> by then yeah. yeah looking forward Robert Pennybacker the executive producer of the learning initiatives which is really important in the state mm -hmm. and especially high leverage where he is at, mm -hmm. at PBS uh, Aloha United we stand and yes for hickey no can do thank you so much Robert thank, thank you it's been a pleasure Aloha. appreciate it yeah. <laughs>